Welcome back to the Webby and O'Neill channel. Thanks for joining us for another video. And today we're going to go in depth in Manchester United training sessions, updates also with Marcus Rashford and Donny van der Beek, and also looking further in with uh, Eric Ten Hag. Apparently, he's been making players use the weaker foot. Mm. Also, Casemiro and Anthony apparently up the training levels. So, we're going to discuss that today, Tony. Yeah. First of all, the news is that Marcus Rashford and Donny van der Beek have returned to training. Well, it's good that Rashford's got there. He really can't miss out uh, through injury and that. So, it's good to see him back. But Donny van der Beek, I absolutely believe if he uh, misses any more games, I think he'll be out in January. Uh, if he misses training... Uh, he's going to have his chance now, right up to uh, the middle of November. If he doesn't make an impact, uh, then I do believe in January he'll look for another club or the club will uh, look to move him on. He cannot afford now to miss any more training. He needs to get game time. Uh, he's had his issues with his agent last year, year before, about not getting game time. He needs to stay injury free. So it's glad, and well, I'm glad that he's back. Uh, I hope he makes a, a good run of it. But me personally, I don't think he is going to be part of the future of Ten Hag's team. But I hope he proves me wrong. I, I, don't get me wrong, we're going to do the match preview for the Sheriff game tomorrow, so get the notification on that. But do you think a player like Donny van der Beek, he, he would have probably have played in that Sheriff game if that Leeds game would have been on on Sunday? I think he'd have, been, uh, I think he'd have had a call for it. Uh, he might have got in, but... With United losing the first game, very much doubtful now. Uh, Ten Hag has to look and get some points on it. So he may have missed out on that, but we'll never know. Yeah, so he might use a stronger squad, i.e. Marcus Rashford, the main man it looks like at yeah. the moment. He might be starting up top, but we'll discuss more of that in tomorrow's video. Well, on the other side, Tony, there's reports coming out uh, from the training today and yesterday that Ten Hag's been making some of the players, certain individuals, use the weaker thoughts now. <sighs> It's, what do you think to that? It, it just reminds me of... Should, a, should that be getting done in every training session, though? Well, I'll, I'll look at it this way. This might be long-winded for me, but hey... No, go it, for it. Right. I'll look at it this way. When you're at school, your school teacher used to say, practice with your left foot and your right foot against the wall. And that's what you did as kids. I, I see this, right, as a deficiency right through United with the coaching staff. Ten Hag's come from Holland... Hmm. He's had his Ajax right the way through. He puts players in difficult positions on the left when they're right-footed. That's what they do right through the youth. And I'm astounded that players here haven't adapted right to learning. And that's what it's all about. Ten Hag's here is to up the game of these players. That's what he was brought in for. And these players haven't got used to using their awkward foot, as they call it. Do you think it's that's down to as well with what you've said with Ten Hag, you know, his philosophy of football, where he's come from, because it's about possession-based football. So that means you've got to use both feet, left and your weaker foot. That's correct. But the thing is, Manchester United, the coaching staff and the players themselves have walked through the last couple of years thinking they can just go out there. There is mm. a big call from people out there and from us. When you look at Manchester United players, have any of them what have come in really improved? Well, as a player, you'd want to improve. You'd want to learn with your weaker foot. It, to me, it's automatic at any footballer to improve. Now, Ten Hag's come in and he is changing everything. And I think this video and the, the reports of him being told to use the weaker foot, whichever it is, right, is a real kick in the backside for him. This really is an embarrassment for players professional footballers to be told to learn to use their other foot. And I'm, and I'm embarrassed for him, to be perfectly yeah. honest with you. And I'm embarrassed for a professional footballer not willing to progress. So you that's at, how I look at it. You, you look at his signings in the summer as well, particularly with Martinez. He always wanted some balance to that back four with a left-footed centre-back. Yes. You know, he's brought in Christian Eriksen, someone, well, I think we can all say, can use both feet. Yes. Casemiro as well. So... He's been looking for that balance to the team, hasn't he, with players who can use both feet and who are comfortable on the ball? Well, that, that's what it's about. You, you get possession. If, you, if you've got a weak foot, you're losing possession. Mm. And he wants possession football. And, 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 and I say again, for players not wanting to improve yeah. on a daily basis by practising your weak points is a sad indictment of what has gone on 
for years and years at Manchester United. Going a bit off topic because he's not been mentioned, well, for many games now. And, you know, with me just thinking about, you know, certain um, training, well, certain aspects of training going on with using the weaker foot. Aaron wan -Pisaka. You know, how how do you think he's like got him on the training field? Because we all know he needs to be a lot more comfortable with the ball at his feet, especially going forward, crossing the ball. Do you think he's getting any extra training done, any, any extra drills? I, I don't know. Well, Adam wan it, it's baffling me uh, that he's not even been brought on. Uh, I think he's totally collapsed mm. and I don't think he's improving. Well, clearly not because he's not in the team. But... I think there's something fundamentally wrong. Do you think it's attitude of anything, Tony? A willingness to want to improve or...? You just don't know. Yeah. Uh, life, the way it's been for the last couple of years, could have sent people under, and it has sent a lot of people under. I think Aaron wan with the pressure uh, of being the right back, with what's gone on, it may have affected him. And it does. You can't all be the same. You can't mm. all be willing to run, to work and whatever. Things do affect you. And I think with Adam wan things have deeply affected him. I don't think it's down to the football skills because this kid can tackle yeah. and can defend. The problem is it's going forward. So he might have an issue with that. So, but yeah, what can no, you do? Yeah, no, what can you do? Just have to, to wait and see. I know Ten Hag has mentioned him in a couple of press conferences ago, just saying that his focus and his... I think he used the term of desire to want to improve. I think he mentioned something along them lines. And I think it's just a tough time he's yeah. going through to adapt. Yeah. You know, so. No, no, that, I think that's the word there, yeah. to adapt to how he wants to play. That's right. And let's, let's see if he can or he can't. But also on the other side, Tony, you know, there's reports coming out that Casemiro and answered into two new boys from the, the summer transfer window. They've upped intensity yeah. in training. It sounds as though there's two class players there who are absolutely mad for it and they want success. They're late to the party. They've had their own pre-season wherever mm. they've been or they've missed training. They've upped their personal training. And United, it seems, have looked at it, the players around them, and gone, we need to be where these are. And that's the class of the two of them. Casemiro has looked a little bit off the pace, but it seems, from all the reports, that he is now gone and he's, he's fighting. He's ready for it. He wants that place and he's not got that start in place. So he's upped himself, and it seems that he's raised everyone around him, which a player of his quality should do. And there you've got Anthony, who's running round, who to me is going to be a future star. He's going to dazzle everyone out there, and he is just flying, and everyone wants to be on the same page. And they've the, the squad around are just looking, and they've raised themselves. Fantastic to see. Not heard it for, for a long time at Old Trafford, Players raising other people's standards and people wanting to join their party. Well, it's something we mentioned in the summer. We want to see players come in in the summer transfer window with a winning mentality. Yeah. He's, he's brought in definitely Casemiro, who's won multiple Champions League, La yeah. League, as we all know his tro trophy all. But with Anthony, it's been interesting over the last few days, some of his comments that he's come out with about Ronaldo how much he looks up to Ronaldo, just Ronaldo being the professional that yeah. he is with his training, etc. cetera. Yeah. So obviously, Ronaldo was there and there's people in that squad who were learning off him and who were willing to learn off him. Yeah. Casemiro, you know, I think you could probably say it's been an underwhelming start to his Manchester United career at the moment, but the class is there with him. And like with these reports, you know, the, the training amongst the squad, Casemiro, Anthony and the likes have, have upped the training intensity and I'm sure he'll get there over the next week or two, Casemiro, to full match fitness. I think when you look at, look at Anthony, I think these people actually stood on the training pitch looking in awe of his tricks, of his yeah. commitment, of his willingness to run. Yeah. He wants the football. We've seen that when he started against Arsenal, got the goal, yeah. the kid is there. Everyone wants to be on the pitch with him and they want to be on his level. Yeah. Uh, so... They've got to raise their level as well. Casemiro and Anthony clearly doing it. Well, another player there that has raised his levels as well since Casemiro's coming is Scott McTominay. We had our doubts about Scott McTominay. You know, we did say in future videos last year and the season before that we could have thought he was a future Manchester United captain. Yeah. Didn't think he was going to be up to scratch after that Brentford game and the Brighton game. Well, Brighton and the Brentford game. Yeah. But it's proved us wrong up to now. You know, it's a full season still yeah. to go, Tony. We might be saying different things come the end of the season, but at the moment it's looking pro promising, promising sorry, for Scott. And that, that's what it's about at Manchester United as well, isn't it? Bringing class players in in each and every pos position for competition and to challenge, and it's only going to benefit us on the field. No, that's quite right. And that, yeah. that's what you want to see. 
you want to see the intensity yeah. in training from all the players and you want to see people challenging and saying, I want that place. And it's something we've lacked for a long time. Yeah, no, some good thoughts now going forward, you know, especially after them first two two league games. It's sort of the mood and everything's turned around with in myself. I know it has with yeah, you. Yeah. I'm sure it has with a lot of you out there, you know, we're looking a lot more towards the next fixture now. You've got that buzz, haven't you? Yeah, like, who yeah, we're playing yeah. next week now, yeah, whereas yeah. last year, that was just totally out the window. But um, yeah, I think we, obviously with the Leeds game not happening, should we finish on that? Your thoughts on? Well, my thoughts on that, quite right, that the Leeds game, if you look at reports out there, uh, the country is lacking in the resources. Thousand police have been drafted in yeah. to London for the uh, Queen Elizabeth II funeral from Scotland. So Greater Manchester, they've decided along with the council to cancel the game. Uh, it'll be rearranged. I'm sure we'll get that game in somewhere. The scale of policing, though, for the Manchester United Leeds game is much bigger than any other game that'll be happening this weekend, though, as well, in its honour. Well, listen, this, the, the Leeds United game and Manchester United, it, it has a history where it needs policing. Uh, it can, it's very volatile. I know that. <laughs> you know that. Uh, that's a polite way of putting it. Uh, so it needs yeah. a strong hand on the game so it's not spoiled. So quite right, that is called off. And Manchester... Greater Manchester, please. I've got the expertise and it's needed in London. So there's no there's no arguing from me about the game being called off. I'm sure it'd be more of a headache for him if it's uh, put to a midweek at 8 o'clock, 8pm uh, kickoff. <laughs> That's a bit of a nightmare, that Move one. Move on. It? Yeah, but um, listen, we, we, yeah, we'll round it all up there. Let us know what you think of today's video. Obviously, we discussed the training sessions, yes. what's been going on. Who's back in training? A little bit on the Leeds game. You know, what's your thoughts on that? But yeah, just let us know what your opinions are in the comments below. Smash the like if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you like our content. And we will be back to tomorrow, yeah. Wednesday, with a Sheriff preview. Just let you... Europa well, League. Yeah, so it's it's going to be interesting who, who's yeah, who actually, actually flying going. out there. So we'll be back with a video on that. Yeah, he might take some of the youngsters out still. Without you know, a doubt. Like Garnacho, McNeil, but we'll give you an update on that tomorrow. So, yeah, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday and we'll be back Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. See you soon.